Man, one thing I've noticed in the 10 or 11 years I've been doing dirt bikes is you have to have some specialized tools to kind of make your life a little bit easier. I want to show you some of the tools and some of the chemicals and oils and different things that I use basically every time I walk into the shop when I'm maintaining dirt bikes or setting up dirt bikes. I buy mostly all of this stuff at Rocky Mountain ATV. If you want to support what we're doing here, use the link down in the video description for Dirt Bike Channel. Once you click on that link, you can buy anything they sell and it helps to support what we're doing. But I want to show you some of the things that I use basically, basically on a day-to-day -day basis. First thing I wanted to show you is this Motion Pro. It's the Motion Pro quarter drive T-handle. This is called like the Spinner 2 or something like that. As you can see, this thing spins. It is so awesome. I'll spray sometimes some WD-40 down here. This thing is in my hands. Oh. I did not knock my eight millimeter off of it. It basically always has an eight millimeter on this sucker. I love this thing. Now there's a bunch of other T-handles that you might want to get. You'll notice that with this, there's some cheaper options and there's some more expensive options. Rocky Mountain ATV has the Tusk line, which is a really economical line. And then sometimes I'll use like a Motion Pro line or something else. Here's another little tool that I love. See this thing? This is a universal, check this out. This is a universal eight millimeter. So it, basically you can get in there if you can't get on like, um, straight on to a nut or something. You can use that. I think I got this one on Amazon. Um, but then as far as like other things, tire pressure gauges. This is a Tusk tire pressure gauge, but I also use one from Motion Pro that I absolutely love, a digital one. Another thing I want to show you. Holy crap, this is something I use all the time. It's the Slacker, Motul Slacker V4 scale sack tool. I like this thing because it has a uh, remote readout here and it's Bluetooth, so I'm, I can hook this onto the bike. If you do sag more than a couple times a year, this will pay for itself. But you can also get these sag, sag tools. This is one from MSR. I know Tusk makes a sag tool, but see, this is a little bit easier than using a tape measure, but you're gonna need somebody to help you. The reason why I love the Motul uh, device is because I can do sag all by myself. If you're using some other measuring device, uh, you're gonna need a helper. Let's talk tire irons. So you can get, I, I've got some tire irons here. These are Motion Pro tire irons and then Tusk tire irons. They're not super expensive. If you're doing moose bibs, you're gonna need the bigger tire irons that are kind of like, have the curvy end to them too. So tire irons are an absolute must to have in your shop. Makes it so you're not pinching tubes or if you're using tubeless, you're not tearing things up. So get yourself some spoons. Another absolute must when you're doing tires, or at least it really helps, is this Motion Pro Bead Buddy. Now I'm, I noticed that Rocky Mountain ATV has a Tusk version of this as well. You just stick this in the, in the tire to hold the bead down as you're working your way around the rim. That is kind of worth its weight in gold. Obviously it helps to have a valve core puller here, if I can show that right here, but you'll want one of those in your kit. Let's talk about thread locker. You've got medium thread locker, which is the blue. You've got the red thread locker, which is the more uh, is the type the more aggressive thread locker. I use both of these. You can get both of these on Rocky Mountain ATV. It's just mandatory. Some of the bolts on your bikes are going to work themselves out. You'll figure out which ones they are, and you'll want to Loctite those. Other pieces on your bike, you'll want anti-seize on there. So, so on certain pieces, like on say your your uh, triple clamps on your forks, those bolts, I'll put anti-seize on those so that they so that they don't actually bind up. So it's funny, you'll find places on your motorcycle where you need them to be tight and not come out and we're putting Loctite and you'll find other things on there that you wanna put anti-seize on there. You're gonna figure out which ones in time. Here's one that I absolutely love. It's the Maxima contact cleaner. I keep this stuff in my truck, in my trailer, in my garage, in, in the shop, basically everywhere. You'll find this stuff all over the place. Now, this is, this, is a, this is a really, really good cleaner and it's good for electrical connections, but it's also good to just get oil off of things. If you're a little bit worried about this being too abrasive, you can also use the Maxima suspension cleaner. So this one obviously is more for doing like suspension stuff, but this is just a little bit less aggressive cleaner. I'm not a suspension guy. I just know that um, I use both of these. I use the contact cleaner more, but the suspension cleaner is like a less harsh version of that. Similar type deal. I wouldn't use the suspension cleaner on electrical components though. Another one of my favorites is the Maxima SC1. This is the high gloss coating. Basically, this is new bike in a can, and you can spray this on your plastics after you're done. You can spray it underneath, underneath your fender, and it'll help uh, to keep mud from sticking. So this is a pretty cool product. Another chemical is the PJ1 brake cleaner. I don't use this a ton, but you do need this when you're cleaning up your brakes and some of that really, really grimy, hard 
uh, you know, nasty stuff. Be careful, this can corrode things. It isn't great on plastics and it isn't super great on aluminums. So just be very, very careful where you apply this and you might wanna clean it off after you're done to not let it just sit there and corrode everything. Other chemicals, I got the Bell Ray foam filter oil. I really like this stuff. I just pour this on the filters. This is a must have. I keep a bunch of that around. Up in here, I've got Maxima uh, brake fluid. Now you can go get brake fluid from your corner, you know, hardware store or whatever. It's just nice that you can get a lot of this stuff right on Rocky Mountain ATV when you are buying uh, stuff. Um, I also use nitrile gloves. You can find different nitrile gloves on, that way you wouldn't, I wouldn't be wiping my fingers off here. I use nitrile gloves whenever I'm doing oil changes or when I'm in with my hands are really, really dirty. I also love this Reverend Motor. This is the Born Again stuff. You can't get this on Rocky Mountain ATV, but Reverend Motors, this is Born Again. This is like, this is like the premium gloss coating. And then this is a Thou Shalt Not Rust, similar to like a WD-40. Uh, so that's really great. You can't get that on Rocky Mountain ATV. Uh, but I mean, there's, there's other foam filter treatments as far as like oils, there's Maxima oil. Um, I'm not really a big chain lube guy. I mostly just use WD-40 to disperse the water off my chains because I'm using O-ring chains. But if you're not using O-ring chains, you probably do want to keep some sort of uh, chain lube or chain oil around. Here's another tool set that I use all the time. It's the 10 piece hex key set. Uh, these are T-handle, basically Allen wrenches from Tusk. I have been using these for years and they have held up beautifully. I'm also using uh, bolt kits. I, get, I buy these Tusk bolt kits and I keep a bolt kit here in my shop. I keep a bolt kit in my trailer and I keep a bolt kit in my uh, basically like go bag, my tool bag in my truck when I'm out on the road. So I've got bolt kits all over because we end up losing bolts all the time. Another thing I really like is are these uh, pick sets. So there's a four piece pick set here where you've got like a little bit of a hook and just kind of like some different picks from different shapes. It's good to get in there and just like pick things out or clean things up. So this pick set is really, really nice. These are super economical, but you'll be happy that you have it. Also like keeping a seal mate around. This is just if you get a little bit of like grit or dirt or a piece of sand up in the fork seal, you can kind of sometimes stick this up in there and, and like kind of run it around and pull that out. So Suspension guys and seal guys don't like it when I talk about that, but this is a seal mate. It's made by Motion Pro. This can sometimes help you limp along uh, if you've got a leaky fork seal and just, you know, extend. Maybe you can get, a, get another ride or two, or sometimes they stop leaking altogether. It's also good to have a set of master link pliers right here. You can see, if you can see on this, it's just basically a pair of pliers that has one side that is longer than the other, so you can get onto a master link with that. Here is an oil seal puller. This one is by K and L, um, but also, or um, they all, Tusk also makes one. You don't use this tool a lot, but I use this to pull like, um, like uh, bearing seals out. I use it to pull counter shaft seals out and things like that. This isn't a tool that you use very often, but when you need it, you freaking need it big time and it's worth its weight in gold. So get yourself a seal puller tool like that. Let's talk battery chargers for a minute. Most of the bikes are coming with lithium ion batteries. And so you need kind of like a smarter, uh, a smarter charger. Rocky Mountain ATV has a bunch of different chargers on their website. This is one that, this is one that I use here. This is the, it's a C-Tech charger. I think I got this one on Amazon. This was highly, came highly recommended for like the anti-gravity restart batteries. Get yourself a battery charger or a battery tender so that you can kind of just top your batteries off, especially if you're not riding your bike very often, but we do need to maintain the battery. So get yourself a decent battery charger. I like to have a heat gun around. Now you can use your wife's hair dryer, but a heat gun just gets really a lot hotter, um, but it's good for graphics mostly. I often use a, just one of these map gas uh, torches here just for heating things up. Sometimes you need to like burn something off or heat something up or pull out a screw or something like that. So I'll, these are super cheap. You can just get these from the hardware store and it's amazing how long this fuel will last. Just a map gas little fuel torch here. Good to have some general purpose grease around here. I just use this Maxima grease. This, this, you get it in a tub here. This will last, it lasts me for a couple of years on a tub. As far as oils go, I mostly use, I mean, you can use anything, but I mostly use Bell Ray 15W50 uh, motor oil. Uh, this will work in basically all the four strokes and it'll, you, it'll work in the two strokes in the gearboxes as well. I mean, I know sometimes they'll say 1040, 1050, 1050, all that stuff, but I'll pretty much just standardize on one of these unless I have a really good reason not to, but this works in the two stroke transmissions and it works in the four stroke motors and the uppers. So that's a great thing. Uh, with the KTM bikes that I've been running, the TPI bikes, I've been running just like the Cross Power 2T. I'm dumping that in the oil reservoir um, because why not? You know, it's, it's a great oil and it was, it was basically designed for those injectors. 
With the new 23 bikes, I'm actually going to be mixing this as well as my premix and just standardize. I mean, I've used I've used AMS Oil Saber for most of my premix bikes for the last 10 years, um, but I'm not 100% sure it's injector safe yet. So until I figure that part out, I'm just going to be using the Motorex Cross Power 2T and mixing that in all the bikes because that's what I've been doing on TPI. So the TBI bikes are going to get this as well. Very good to have a ratio right mixing cup. I've got one of these in the garage. I also have it here in the shop as you're mixing oils and mixing, uh, mixing oil and the fuel and things like that. A ratio right cup is very, very good. Or maybe you're just measuring like fork oil and stuff. You want a good way to measure your oil. Engine ice coolant. This is my favorite uh, coolant to put in the radiators in the radiators in the bikes. Engine ice. This is really, really good. I buy this on Rocky Mountain ATV. I swear it makes the bikes run a couple of a couple of degrees cooler. I don't have any scientific evidence on that, but it just feels like it does. So this is this is a coolant that I use and keep in the shop all the time. This is my favorite funnel of all time. It's by Motion Pro. It's the Pro Funnel. Now sometimes this is out of stock, and sometimes I swear that like they discontinue it. But I did just see it on Rocky Mountain ATV's website. I love this thing because it's got a ball valve here. It's got a measuring deal here. So if I'm doing a gear oil change, I know I need 800 or like 800 milliliters of oil. I'll put that right in here, and then just boom, dump that down in the bike. It's got this cap on the top of it, so it always stays clean. This literally is my favorite funnel of all time, Motion Pro Pro Funnel. It's also, it's also good to have like a flexible funnel if you can find one of these. Um, these this, this, one is, oh, this one is a Drifters products, um, but I think I got this on Rocky Mountain DD, I don't know, but there's, having, a, having a flexible funnel is not necessarily a bad thing. Air filters, I always keep at least one spare air, air filter for every bike. I like these uh, twin air pre-oil filters, um, and then I'll clean my own filters and then put them back in the bikes, but plenty of filters kicking around because you never want to have a dirty filter and not be able to ride. So you always need to have two filters for every bike that you've got. Tires, tires are a consumable product, and I've got a bunch of tires up here in the top of my loft here, and I've got tires down there. Keep tires around, make sure that you've got a spare set of tires for every bike that you've got because tires are a consumable. You'll get better bang for the buck by putting new tires on your bike than anything else you could do. Anything. Keep tires in the shop. Also keep tubes. For my kids' bikes, I've got tubes over here. I've got tubes up in this, up in this thing because if you get a flat, you always want to be able to just do it. Just get that. As soon as you put a tube in a tire, just go ahead and order another one for the next time. I've got four sets of two, or I've got two full sets of tubeless sitting right over here in the shop because tubeless is also a consumable I'm putting on all my bikes. So if it's something I'm going to put on the bikes, I'm going to order and keep stock of it, of it here in the shop all the time. Another thing I can't really live without is my Torx bit set. So this is a, a seven piece quarter drive and three eighths drive uh, Torx bits. Uh, I'll put these on T handles and these are worth their weight in gold because a lot of the stuff, there's more and more stuff on our bikes comes in Torx screws. So make sure you grab yourself a set of Torx bits. Levers. If you're not going to run full wrap hand guards, it's probably a good idea to keep levers on hand. Now, if you put Teflon tape under the levers and you move your levers inward on the bars, you don't break them nearly as often, but it really does suck. Sometimes it just happens, especially if you're out on the trail. I'll keep levers in my riding pack. I'll keep levers in my truck and I'll keep levers in the shop because it really sucks if a lever is broken. So I just keep those on hand. It's a consumable product. Probably mentioned it before, I use WD-40. I don't think you can get this on Rocky Mountain ATV, but I just buy this on Amazon. By the way, I have an Amazon link. This is something I'll put on uh, various parts, including my chains to disperse water off of them and keep them from rusting. A bike floor pump. So this is like a mountain bike or a road bike, like a pedal bike floor pump. I keep one of these in my shop, I keep one of these in the garage, and I keep one of these in the truck because this allows me to just put air in my tubeless and air in my tires. Um, out on the trail or out on the, at the trailhead or wherever. These things are awesome. I just buy these on Amazon. I don't know, 40, 50 bucks or something like that. And they last me a couple of years until I wear them out. But these are indispensable. I also have an air compressor, but you don't need an air compressor. Air compressors are nice to have, especially for blowing off parts and stuff like that. And if you're doing a bunch of tires, but this is all you really, really need. So that was a lot. Most of this stuff, again, I buy from Rocky Mountain ATV. They are the best in the business. And if you use my links, any of the stuff that you find down in the video description here, it has to have that little URL tag. I'm probably putting it up right now on the screen. So if you wanna bookmark one of my links, you can totally do that, but just make sure that the bookmark actually contains the URL tag at the end there. Because Rocky Mountain ATV hurries and reloads the page. They put a cookie in your browser, a tracking cookie in your browser that lasts for like a day or something. So anything, when you click a link, even if it's a link for one of these specific products, 
then anything that you buy from them uh, gives me credit. So you just click on the link and then you just buy as normal. You log into your account, you do all the things and it gives me a referral bonus. But like I said, if you're gonna, if you're gonna bookmark it, please, please, please make sure that your bookmark includes, includes that URL tag at the end of the thing and then Rocky Mountain ATV will reload it. So if you click on my link, it reloads the page and then if you bookmark that page, it's not helping me out at all because the very next time you go to it, you're not actually putting the tracking cookie in your browser. So make sure that that happens. You can email me about it. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, send me an email, kyle at dirtbikechannel.com and I will do my best to get back to you in a timely fashion. Um, as you can tell, I love this stuff. I love dirt bikes and I love some of the tools and, and the chemicals and I just love having things on hand so that I can put these bikes together and get them set up and keep my kids going and keep my bikes going. And Rocky Mountain ATV has been indispensable in allowing that to happen. So they're the best in the business and uh, just really love them. Um, so that's what I've got for you guys. Hopefully this video is helpful. Hopefully it's maybe given you some ideas, maybe some things, could be even a gift thing. Keep in mind that by this point in the video, nobody's watching, but in December, when I'm doing the sweepstakes, which will start on Cyber Monday, any order you place with Rocky Mountain ATV after clicking my link gives you three free entries into winning the 20, the two bikes that I got up for grabs. So I'm constantly doing bikes, uh, constantly doing these uh, bike sweepstakes um, and using my link for Rocky Mountain ATV gets you entries into that. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart uh, for all of your support. Grab yourself a shirt during the sweepstakes or a hat or a hoodie or tie downs or some tools or parts for your bike or whatever. Uh, on dirtbikechannel.com or at rockymountainatv.com. And until next time, leave a single track.